on one of them. <laughs> um, so I think this is going to be another uh, great panel. Let's hope so. And I want to thank Amadi Carpets, where we are, and V Cafe, who provided the delicious lunch. Wasn't that good? So thank you all for that and for being such gracious hosts. And I am going to turn things over to our co-curator, Frances Anderton. Hello, everybody, and thank you for, for being here today. We think that this is actually the most important topic to be addressed. You know, we're taking on some pretty heavy topics, but this is the one that really matters. Um, I, some of you may have seen a statistic thrown around. There's more dogs than children in Western, the city of West Hollywood. I don't know if it's true, but it is fair to say that there's a lot of dogs in West Hollywood. There's a lot of dogs region-wide. We love our dogs. There's a lot of designers with dogs. There's a lot of designers who are designing for clients with dogs. So the dog is kind of the invisible client for so many of us. And yet, we're talking about a world that tends to create extremely lovely interiors. And dogs and lovely interiors don't always coexist. So we're going to talk about the coexistence of the designer with the beloved dog. And there is no better person to address this than Madeline Stewart, who you all know, wonderful designer, who also loves her two dogs. So is that fair to say? That's Has an <laughs> understatement, to be sure. <laughs> and their, their little bonny faces are going to come up in a minute on the screen. Um, how are we doing actually with images? Because we do have a very interesting image that we'd love to share with you before Madeline actually gets on to um, Mr. Peabody and Beatrice. That's right. <laughs> so ju just yesterday, in fact, a client of mine sent me this video this is Tilly, her dog. We designed this sofa for her. It's covered in a nanotex fabric. And th th she wanted to flip the rug. The rug is reversible. And um, so here are the boys who've come to, uh, you know, to move the furniture around and flip the rug in the kitchen. Um, and here's Tilly. And hit it, boys. There we go. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tilly, you didn't even move. I just, uh, and I mean, clearly, we've what we have here is a is a very spoiled dog and a very comfortable sofa. I'd like to say, um, but I just got that yesterday, and uh, it, you know, it it certainly proves a point, and in part, that point is that not only are we you know, welcoming dogs into our lives. We're now designing around them. We're selecting specific fabrics, you know, so-called performance fabrics, things that are, um, have been treated, things that are nanotext. Um, this client, we bought her a rug that was reversible. She ended up having um, a carpet cleaner out there, you know, every couple of weeks because uh, she has two Airedales and a Jack Russell, and uh, they did enough damage to the, to the carpet, even with this constant care and maintenance, that we now, uh, we are abandoning that rug. Uh, it's going by the wayside, and we're ordering her a rug made out of uh, acrylic fibers, uh, which are the, the equivalent of, the, uh, of outdoor fabrics just so that it will be you know, st you know, even more bulletproof <laughs> when it comes to these three, uh, these three canines that rule her roost. And typically when one talks of a spoiled client, there's a sense of how annoying that spoiled client is. But when it comes to a spoiled dog, no sense of annoyance. There's nothing that <laughs> one will not do. And why don't we talk about a couple of them? Here they are. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any such, I think there's such a thing as a spoiled child, but I don't think there's <laughs> such a thing as a spoiled dog. Um, this is uh, Beatrice on, on the left and Mr. Peabody on the right. They are sitting um, on um, antique um, stick wicker that is in my Santa Barbara house. Those fabrics, uh, needless to say, are performance fabrics. Um, and the, this is uh, Mr. Peabody um, lying on my very, very expensive linens, um, <laughs> you know, on the, my bed upholstered in Fortuny fabrics. There is virtually nowhere in the house that the dogs are not permitted to go or sit or lie. Um, in fact, they use my, I have, uh, you know, some beautiful carpets in my home, um, and basically they use them as a napkin. And I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but after they're through eating or drinking, they go and they kind of rub their face back and forth <laughs> against, you know, uh, against whether it's the side of a sofa or in this case, a, you know, really beautiful Ushok. 
Um, this is Beatrice at a, at a friend's house, um, who's this friend also happens to have a couple of dogs and, and wouldn't mind, I'm sure. Mr. Peabody in my office on a Rob Sean Giving sofa um, covered in um, not a performance fabric, um, I might add. And um, I don't know what other images we've got. But um, here's another oh, one. There, there Here they, they are, are out in the there lounge. They are outside. <laughs> um, they're really quite an extraordinary pair. Mr. Peabody is three. He was a rescue. He was minutes from the glue factory, um, about to be put down, and someone um, spotted him and grabbed him from a shelter in San Bernardino. And um, through some extraordinary efforts of terrific people, he found his way to me about two years ago. And he is the love of my life. Um, I would, if, if it were legal, I know they've, they've made great strides in terms of marriage equality, but <laughs> I would leave my husband in a second and marry Mr. Peabody if it was only, <laughs> if, if I could only do so legally. He is really fantastic. This, in fact, is my living room. This is Mr. Peabody on what a uh, sofa I designed that is called the Peabody sofa, naturally. <laughs> um, it's his favorite spot, and... Um, I made another Peabody sofa for my Santa Barbara house, and um, he lies on top of the, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, monitors the uh, <laughs> life outside. This is Mr. Peabody in our office, um, answering the phone and um, working on the computer. Um, he's actually quite good at it, and uh, so most of the time we put him in charge at the front desk. Um, but he really, he, he's got a face for film, that boy. I just <laughs> got to put him to work. Um, this is this is Beatrice in another shot in my living room where she is um, lying on top of you know an extraordinarily expensive and fragile Bargello fabric. Um, but uh, like we're talking about, I I I don't feel as though um, there should be any spot that's verboten. <laughs> but I will add, as long as they don't start eating it. Uh, they can lie on it, but we had a client with two beagles, two rescue beagles, and just about every week we received a call. Um, uh, we received a call to either uh, repair a cushion, uh, repair a leg, um, you know, uh, take the, the you know the welt had been you know fully snapped off in some you know aggressive surge of. Uh, you know, of anxiety, and these these two dogs proceeded uh, ultimately to just eat their way through two custom <laughs> chairs. Um, finally, we had to make slip covers for them, and then so that they could just eat the slip cover and then <laughs> and then leave the uh, the the chair intact um, underneath. But it oh look at that's so dear that's so dear. Um, but it is true that you know the, that most of my clients now the the ones who have dogs are are asking more and more for us to design around them and to design using fabrics, using fabrics that have been nanotext, using fabrics that are, you know, made of these um, performance fibers so that they don't feel as though there's any spot that's off limits. Um, I think they probably, you know, keep their kids away from furniture more than they ask, keep dogs. I was going to ask, are there, are, there, are there situations where the dog's allowed but, say, guests with a glass of red wine or small oh. children coming in from the garden with mud would not be allowed? Uh, ab <laughs> absolutely, without question. That's, um, that's more to the point. But I think, um, I, I think people who welcome... Uh, who welcome animals into their home, they've made a pact. They've made a pact with their home. They've made a pact with themselves. And they recognize the fact that, um, that you, you need to, let's say, manage your, you know, your expectations when it, comes to, um, when it comes to what you're going to put into a home. So most likely you're not going to upholster that sofa in a stark white velvet. So it does change your aesthetic somewhat. So your Peabody sofa that you have in both of your houses, <laughs> did, <laughs> who's, who's that? It's hilarious. <laughs> Just, I have no idea. <laughs> is that one that we got from Instagram? Is that, one we, is that an image we were sent? Oh, great. You know, do send us. What is, our, what is our Instagram account so people can even send now images while we're talking? OK, yeah. we'll get it in a minute. Anyway, your Peabody sofa. Did you, obviously you designed, you chose fabrics that yes. were res resilient. Was there anything that you did to the design of the sofa that was somehow doggy appropriate? <laughs> well, <laughs> this is far more amusing than anything I have to You can comment. Say. Okay, you're, you're welcome to, to comment, comment on the I like the hat. Look at the <laughs> I like the t-shirt. And uh, clearly I like that dog. Um, 
That is absolutely adorable. PSNY. <laughs> But this goes to, I mean, the, the, you're, that pe the Peabody sofa is comfortable, you know, for people, but clearly the dogs are the ones who are going to dictate, you know, what they find comfortable just by where they choose to perch. And you have, as I recall, it went past quite fast, but I think the, the arms sloped. Was yep. that a slope for fun for the dog? <laughs> I can't say it was designed with, as a chin rest for Mr. Peabody. I can't, I, I can't say that. But, uh, but I, you know, look, a, a, a dog is going to gravitate towards the most comfortable spot in the house. So if they're the ones who are uh, seeking out a certain, well, that's not the most comfortable spot right. in the house. Well, I guess this really then tests, say, Madeline, when you get um, somebody that wants a really super minimalist interior you know we all know that there's a struggle between cozy and minimalist in the human um undoubtedly uh, yes but but do dogs like minimalism i can't imagine <laughs> a dog being being very comfortable on a barcelona lounge chair no i just can't i just don't think it's that welcoming well for humans or for canines <laughs> It's, it's damn but good looking. Will but humans will put up with it. Yes. They'll when put up with the pain, not, but dogs won't. Dogs will not. I will say the one place that I, I you know, it, it really comes down to a test of wills, and that's the bed. Do you allow your dog to sleep in bed? How many? How many in this room allow? <laughs> They're on this side of the room for some reason. Oh, wow. here's a few. And how uh, many do not allow the dog to sleep in bed? Oh, there's Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't, you, you don't. don't. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I, I had it, uh, it's been very so what about you, Madeline? Did you put your hand up? I put my hand up and, you know, I, my husband is 6'3", and um, remarkably enough, we sleep in a queen-size bed. The two of us, Beatrice and Mr. Peabody, and somehow we managed to make it work. It's but very are they cozy. On top, are they on top of the bed or in the bed? Well, Beatrice is top dog, because she is the real bitch in the house. And uh, you'd think it would be me, but it's not. It's Beatrice. And, uh, and so Beatrice sleeps at the top of the bed. And then when we got Mr. Peabody, there's sort of a Maginot line, you know, somewhere just below the knee that he is not allowed to cross. And she makes that very clear uh, to him. So she sleeps at the top, and he sleeps at the foot in between us. And it's, you know what? Been married 30 years, it's just fine. I, it hasn't, hasn't affected our life in the least. It sounds like it's brought great joy. Yeah. Now, now what about... Uh, <laughs> For me and the dogs anyway. <laughs> I should probably ask Steve. Steve I don't plus know. the dogs. Mm. So what about technology? I was talking with the, the district's uh, Kristen here on the way, and Kristen told me about, I guess, it was a realtor that you had met. Was that right? You, you toured a home, and in the home... Walk towards a fence, ah! You know, it's not like, hopefully it's not like that. But that's a, that's a fantastic know. thing. Yes. I mean, now they have chips that they implant in dogs to help you find them should they get lost. So, you know, why not? Maybe, maybe next they'll implant that, and they don't have to wear it on the collar. And that way they can just... No, that's probably not a good idea, right? Not a good idea. Now, we recently did a, um, we did a sort of um, preliminary DM panel a couple of weeks back at West Edge, and we talked to designers who were designing for absentee clients, foreign clients, people who are not really there to either live in the house or really monitor the process of the design. And one of the last points that was made was that given they're not really there, they don't want anything living in the house, flowers, fruit, animals. You as a designer working do you do you, do you feel that you would sort of recommend people to have dogs would you would you as part of kind of creating a cozy environment bring animals into the conversation well i, d I don't think any more than anyone should have a child who doesn't really want one um, and there are plenty of people who shouldn't and do um, i think there are <laughs> plenty of people who uh, who may not be terrific dog parents <laughs> And yet they they feel that that's sort of a, a requisite part of the uh, you know of the look of you the know. cozy uh, yeah, at home. The, but I think you know once you if you really welcome an animal, and I know we're talking about dogs, and I we should probably address. 
cats? Maybe. I'm a cat person, but this Maybe. We, should we address cats? It's funny because at the DM discussions before this, we we and we we all agreed we want to do something about dogs, and it's like, well, what about cats? Because I have a cat. How many people are cat people? Well, there we go. So. Slightly different issues, but not entirely different. Well, the, the one uh, issue that's in, that is entirely different, and I imagine anyone here who has a cat can tell you, is this, right? Ah. This on the, you know, oh, on the right, arm the of cats. the sofa. Right. And dogs, don't really, dogs don't really do that. Well, in um, West Hollywood, didn't they nearly... Wasn't there a fight over the declawing? Yes. Had the, de had the declaw side won, you wouldn't have that problem. That is correct. You would not. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just move outside of West Hollywood right. and do whatever you want. Right. But I, look, I don't, you know, to, to any more than a child should be an accessory, um, a dog shouldn't be an accessory. So I, I could never recommend that someone have a dog um, who doesn't want one. And in fact, we were just doing a very large home for clients and the, their dog passed away before they moved into the new house. And the new house is extremely Extraordinary. It's very clean and white, with exceptionally, um, you know, an exceptional world-class art collection, and 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 pale fabrics and pale rugs. And I said, well, aren't you going to, you know, replace your beloved, you know, pop who's who's passed away before you've moved in? And the husband would walk him, and you know, it was really a part of their lives. And she looked at me and she said, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, now that, now that the house is done and it's all, you know, and it's so impeccable, like we're, we're going to be dog free. And I found that rather sad because um, dogs give so much back. They give such, you know, unconditional love and they, they you know, provide so much um, just solace and soulfulness to a house that it, I, I felt that was a bit, you know that was that was a bit disturbing, but look, if you're not if you're not ready and willing to put up with the the moss and fuss and you know the mud, I mean the the, the sofa I have in Santa Barbara is white, but I made sure to get fabric that uh, is nanotech. So when they come running in from the from the garden, you know you just let it dry, you brush it off. It's all very well and good, but um, but not everyone's willing to put up with that. So I think you have to find it, have to have a place in your heart for that. Nanotech, you've mentioned it a number of times, is that um, you should almost be a poster child for, I, for nanotech, or dogs should be being poster dogs for yeah, nanotech. Yeah, for nanotech. But well, is, is, like, that the favorite, a, is that the favorite um, material in, in, in well, it's, dog it's, um, interiors? Um, you know, Holly Hunt, uh, Great Plains Fabrics, they, they actually provide this treatment for the, uh, to the for, fabric for that is done uh, before you even purchase it. And... And it's it's really quite it's quite extraordinary. So, uh, but everything nowadays, the those the acrylic fabrics that they have, the performance fabrics, they look and feel like like velvet. They don't. They're not creepy. They're not oily. They're not. Um, you know, they have the hand of a real fabric. So there's almost no reason not to use it, whether you have dogs or not, whether you have children or not. Um, they are. It's an. It, it's really a fantastic sort of evolution in, in what used to be just these hard, scratchy outdoor fabrics that you would use for an umbrella or a canvas awning. Now they, they look like real indoor fabric. So we use, them, we use them a lot, a lot for people. Was there a time where you were running your company where you didn't have a dog? No. <laughs> You've always had a dog? Yes. Yes, yes. So, so I want, you know, obviously children change. Designers obviously control their environments more than most people tend to control yes. their environments. So it's very interesting when one brings in dogs, cats, children, because obviously one can't control any of those to the extent one can control one's own environment. So I wondered if there was a before or after, so if, if you'd felt yourself change, you know, as a designer with the increasing kind of engagement with the dog, but it sounds like you've always had one, so I want to know, I want to ask you a question. Have you, you have a child. Did you change your environment? No, but then I, I'm embarrassed to say it was never as tidy as one of yours would have been. <laughs> <laughs> I love design, but I somehow never managed to be quite as tidy as designers. So it was sort of ready-made in a way for that next stage. Right. But... And I lived with someone who's a hoarder of books and stuff. So 
so a child could sort of fit into that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the cat, but we have the cat whom we, you know, adore, have always had cats. And of course, there's the hair thing. Does the dog, do your, your dogs don't have the hair oh, thing? Oh, they have the hair thing. Oh. And as someone who wears almost exclusively black clothing, the idea that I would get two white dogs is so truly dumb. Um, and then it was just at a certain point you fall in love and then it's too late. But yes, there is never a time when no matter how natty I feel or how dressed up I am, when I don't look down and find white hairs all over all over my clothes. And that's what that's why God invented the, the lint roller. Right, the lint yeah. roller has got to be one yes. of this era's greatest inventions. It is, unquestionably. Well, we are going to throw it to the floor to bring in some doggy stories from the floor. <laughs> Does anyone have a um, question pertaining to designing around dogs that they would like to ask, that you'd like to ask Madeline, or dog stories to share? Or are we... That's amazing. Yes. Oh. Oh, all, all the time. And in fact, um, I, <laughs> sorry, that's just fantastic. Um, but that's that's what that's what training is all about. And that that the word off comes in handy, you know, if you if you've got a you know a, a trained beast, especially one that size. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's that certainly is an issue. But no, when you know, I I I I've traveled with my dogs, but I've always traveled to dog friendly places so where you know if if someone has a dog and you bring a dog they're much more inclined to be um accommodating than if you took him to susan's house i don't think she'd be i don't think she'd <laughs> he'd be too pleased there's a, there are increasingly oh here's a question over here I had a client who wanted us to design a modernist dog house, um, but you know, ext but but extremely fully realized, you know. And and it, initially, she was she was actually shopping this idea to some prominent contemporary architects, um, who you know, and and they they all declined the commission, you know. Maybe they were. You know, maybe Frank Gehry had something else to do. I don't know, but um, she actually she actually asked us to design something that was you know fully realized in a contemporary vein, as a, as real as a home for her um, for her. Jack did you Russell, do it? Actually. Yes, we did. Do you have photos? No, I don't. <laughs> I no, I don't. I actually, remarkably enough, I do, it was kind of completed and then she moved away and you know. But, she was crazy, clearly. But that um, takes us back to the minimalist question. The, the modernist dog has presumably was fairly Spartan. Was it Spartan or did was no, it? No, it yes, was yes. very much so. Yeah. It, was, it was white on the outside and white on the inside. But <laughs> so was her house and so was her soul. I mean, it was completely, <laughs> you know, it was completely spotless. So, so maybe this was one of those people that should not have had a dog. That, it doesn't sound as if she was creating a dog-friendly no. environment. But I, you know, we have we have uh, we've certainly we've designed you know very elaborate dog beds. Um, and we've, you know, designed around dogs. We've designed rooms where, you know, dogs had special, uh, you know, sleeping quarters. Um, we've, you know, I, we, we often, I have, I, there's a, a, a place in uh, Montecito, William Lehman, and they do the chicest um, wicker dog bed that I buy for all my clients, and then we have special cushions made for it, so they, you know, <laughs> they correspond to the, uh, you know, to the colors of the room. Um, so, I mean, we do, we're very used to doing stuff like that. So there really is. I mean, it's, we thought this would be kind of just fun, you know, but it's, it's business. This is, it is, this is business. It, there's no there's, and there's no question that that client who, uh, you know, she bought a rug and then decided that it wasn't dog friendly enough that she was willing to invest in buying another rug just because the dogs rule her house. And she, there, she wasn't willing to prohibit them from being comfortable in any, any spot in the in the home. And increasingly, hotels are allowing dogs, and so the, the decor's having to change there. But they allow children. And so. 
<laughs> but they didn't used to allow dogs. They always allow children. Dogs have become... Isn't that the case? I feel as if, anecdotally, there's more and more hotels that are allowing dogs. I, th I think that's probably right. Yeah. And yet they always allowed children. How do you explain terrible, that? Terrible, terrible. Children How should just be left that? alone yeah. in the house <laughs> while <laughs> parents well, travel. <laughs> um, so any, any other questions, comments, dog stories? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Are certain people harder to please than others? <laughs> yeah, well, there's your answer. Hell yes is the answer. But which, which breeds? <laughs> which this, dog, this dog here looks to be very, very <laughs> easygoing. <laughs> Not? It is very easy. And yeah, that but if, is, that's a beautiful dog. Sure, I would think anything without a nap, you know, anything without a fabric nap, without fibers that are, you know, sticking up like a mohair, a velvet, you know, anything like that, because otherwise, you, you know, everything kind of sinks into it as it does with carpeting. Um, Well, if you're allergic to wool, then yes. And, you know, and then he just, he sounds like he has a lot of issues <laughs> that, are, that are above and beyond, yeah, being allergic. But it, it is amazing to me that there are plenty of dogs now that, you know, that don't shed and they're being bred not to shed and, you know, and, and Labradoodles now yes, don't shed because, because they're the being... the Obamas. They had to go on this quest to find... That's right. They, they were going to get a lab, Labradoodle. Or did they get it? Is their dog a Labradoodle? They see everybody knows the Obama's dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, we were we were the dogs. Too. We were talking about that. I wonder if they're allowed to, you know, wreak havoc in the White House. Do they? Are they allowed the to Michael run around? Smith, wasn't it Michael Smith? Michael Smith. Yes, yes. yes. We, like, should, we should ask him. We should ask if he had to design around uh, nanotech uh, uh, around the the Obama's dogs. Yes. And we were talking earlier about um, Queen Elizabeth, whose corgis, you know, uh, run wild in Buckingham Palace, and presumably they're not in, the, you know, they're not allowed to sit on the, uh, you know, the Georgian furniture or the the Heppelwhite in uh, in some of the more stately rooms. But I imagine when they get to, you know. Windsor Castle, it must be all hell breaks loose with those dogs. I mean, they're coming running in with mud and jumping around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like they, <laughs> and, you know, I guess when you're the queen, you can do whatever the heck you want. But um, Do you know Caroline? Well, Caroline seems to know what the royal family does. <laughs> <laughs> to death and um, yeah. <laughs> fighting that's that is an issue but <laughs> that's I, that was a great story i do remember that <laughs> i do remember that Imagining it, Caroline, or didn't there used to be this thing said about the English um, gentleman loved his horse, his dog, and his wife in that order? Uh, yeah, his horse, yeah. his dog. <laughs> 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 so the well, dogs were treated very weakly, but the horse yeah. went one better. We haven't even got into horses. Well, I know what my order would be, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it unsaid, <laughs> you know, just because uh, I will have to... I would have to deny ever say <laughs> you won't tell Steve. You know the answer to that, Carla. <laughs> Over here. Yeah. 
Yeah, and dogs never dogs will. Dogs never do. And for the most part, the dogs are probably better looking than those kids, and that's what you would want to hang on the wall. Right. Well, and they don't stay still. If you're trying, to, do, do you get? That's so interesting. So you're painting a lot of portraits of dogs. Yes, yes, but I do it Andy Warhol style. I have him send me a lot of snapshots from the 1960s. Oh. Any cats that you Yes, just fewer, fewer than dogs. I mean, in terms of order, like people who are bonding with their with their dogs. I think there is a bond with a dog that's yeah. completely different than a cat. There is. There. They are. I mean, they're both sentient creatures, and they both, <laughs> you know, they they both have the ability to love and be loved. But dogs. Dogs need you. Cats do not. And oh, our cat needs us. <laughs> it doesn't need you, Francis. It he makes not. those faces. <laughs> You've captured his essence perfectly. <laughs> All right, well, are we... Well, I think we're doing well. Are there any other concluding dog stories? Send us... Did, oh, Ryan, do we have that Instagram? With a hashtag. Hashtag WeHoDesignDistrict. So if you have some great dog photos and cats, send them to Mostly hashtag WeHoDesignDistrict. Oh, Madeline Stewart, today. what a pleasure. Well, really. thank you, Francis. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me. <laughs> thank you very much. So, um, and to Amadi Home. Uh, yes, fact, thank you so much. How do the Amadi Home people feel about dogs? Do you dogs? have dogs? You, there's a lot of rugs in here. No dogs? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's something funny about having the dog topic in, in a room full of rugs. <laughs> right. <laughs> lots of opportunities for right. pee. I see lots of opportunities. Yeah, we didn't even talk about pee. Yeah. Oh, well. People know the pee story. We didn't talk about we, pee and poo. We didn't talk about <laughs> pee, poo, best, best cleansing fluids, or anything like that. <laughs> but that would apply to children, time. too. Yes. Um, Okay, thank you very much. The next date is at Poltrona Frau, 215, Forever Glam. Forever Glam. So forever oh, glam. Us trying to keep ourselves forever glam and creating environments that um, are, a, are, a, are a more fun way of, 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 of living as we age is going to be the topic of the next one. So um, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, thank Madeline. You. Thank you. <laughs>